Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday to you guys. We made it to the end of another week. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We beseech you, O Father, save now, send prosperity now. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Nicole, Heartbeat Juanita, Heartbeat Elaine, and Heartbeat Donald. Hey there, Heartbeat Yvette, Heartbeat Belinda, Heartbeat Yolanda, Heartbeat Sherry, Heartbeat Rainy, and Heartbeat Lamont. Good morning, good morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Alice. Hey there to the, all the Heartbeats over there on Instagram and the Heartbeats on the YouTube channel. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Val, before I get started, will you all help me wish... Heartbeats, the twins, Heartbeats, Yolanda, and Heartbeat, Rainy, happy birthday. Their birthday is actually Sunday, but I do not want to say happy birthday afterwards. These two are my right and left hand in ministry. They help make sure everything is going smoothly. Uh, Heartbeat Yolanda is my senior administrator and Heartbeat Rainy is my missions administrator and they make sure I look good. So happy birthday to you both. I pray that God will do the, the amazing in both of your lives. I pray that everything that you are believing God for, that the both of you will receive it. I thank God that he has brought me into, brought you all into my life. And I pray that I am a blessing at, like you guys guys are a blessing to me. I love you guys a bunch. Happy, happy birthday, Heartbeat Yolanda and Heartbeat Rainy. All right, let's get into it. And so welcome to the Gathering of Hearts. I'm Regina Banks. Your GPS to wholeness, you're very welcome. Your GPS to wholeness, aka I'm the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of all week. Words to live by part five. Words to live by part five. And so all this week, we've been talking about, you know, instead of repeating or confessing words that the world has um, taught us, no pain, no gain, those type of cliches that we ought to be living by and quoting the words of the Bible, the blueprint for our lives. And so we started out to, um, saying one of the words to live by was Proverbs 4, 20 and 27, where Solomon is talking to his children and he wants them to view him as a father, receive me as a father and not the king that I am. And then we went over to Philippians 1, 6 and yesterday, and we did Proverbs Monday and Tuesday and um, Wednesday was Philippians 1, 6. Yesterday, Thursday was Numbers 20, 319. And all of those are excellent words to live by. However, today, I think this is one that we really, really need because this word uh, we need to live by will allow us to always walk in the divine destiny that God has for us. And it's talking about fear. You know, fear keeps us from moving forward. Fear tells us that we can't do something. And so we have to live the, by the words spoken in these two pericopes of scripture that I'm about to read. The first one is Joshua 1, 9, and it's the, I'm reading it out of the free Bible version. And here Moses has died and Joshua has to now take the lead. And although he's been walking alongside Moses, you know, there's some apprehensions. I'm not Moses, you know, will the people receive me? We know how that is. Whenever God is asking us to do something new, to do something we've never done before, to, you know, walk out on the water, you know, we're like, wait a minute, God, wait a minute, Jesus. I don't know about that. I don't have the qualifications for that. My resume doesn't, you know, show that I'm, I'm ready to do something like that. Um, but uh, Joshua 1, 9, it says this again, the free Bible version. It says, don't forget what I told you. Be strong, be brave, don't be afraid, don't get discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so um, past the former pastor of Saddleback, Rick Warren, he did a study on fear and found that fear, don't be afraid, the word fear is located in the Bible 365 times. 
oh, that was quite interesting. It's like God gave you a scripture for fear for once a year. Since there are 365 days in the year, he gave it to us for once a day. I'm sorry, for the year, because fear is real. And although fear is real to us, Fear is not real to God. And so he says, don't forget what I told you. Don't forget that I told you that I will always be there for you. Don't forget that I told you that I would never leave you nor forsake you. Don't forget that I told you that I'm going on ahead of you to prepare a place for you. Don't forget that I told you you are never alone, that I am always with you. And so he was telling Joshua, he was like, listen, don't worry about what Moses did. Don't worry about that you're not Moses. Moses, know that just like I was there for Moses, I'm going to be there for you and that everywhere you go, everywhere your feet may go, you obtain that land. Just take authority, take control over what I have already spoken to you and over your life. And so I'm saying the same thing to you, RB Nation. God has already spoken a word to you. He's already told you what he's going to do. He's told you that this is the year of your divine destiny which means you got to get there because this is what he has prearranged, predestined for your life. And so don't be afraid. Fear will try to come in. It will try to paralyze you, but you got to tell fear, get on out of here. We're not doing that. You know, fear is like, you know, you're afraid. Think about fear. You're afraid of something that has not happened. I want you to really think about that. Let's begin to switch our brain. We are afraid of something that has not happened yet. We are afraid of something that may not ever happen, but we have allowed fear to paralyze us, to stop us in our tracks and not do what God has called us to do. So he's told you, go ahead and open that business, but you're afraid. Will this be able to sustain my family? You know, will I get out there and not have enough? Well, you know, yes, we're going to count the cost, but if God has given you a word and told you to do something, you've got to follow it. If you never do it, you you will never operate in the divine destiny for your life. It might be the destiny that you want it, but it's not the divine destiny for your life. Okay, Pastor G, you just gave us an Old Testament scripture. What about the New Testament? Well, I'm glad that's your concern because I have a New Testament scripture for you. 2 Timothy 1.7, where Paul is speaking to Timothy, giving him some tips on how to do this thing. He says this, for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. That's the King James Version. I want to read, I got three versions to read for you because I want to make sure you get this and that you understand exactly who you are in the kingdom of God. The NIRV says this, God gave us his spirit and the spirit doesn't make us weak and fearful. Understand this. The King James Version said um, God has not given you the spirit of fear. This version said God gave us his spirit. God isn't afraid of anything. He's God. Everything belongs to him. The earth and the fullness thereof. So he isn't afraid of anything. And he says this. I gave you my spirit. Jumping back in the Old Testament. Remember he said that we were made in his image. So he says this. Wait a minute. I gave you my spirit. It said God gave us his spirit. And the spirit doesn't make us weak and fearful. Switch your brain. You do not have the spirit of fear. It's not in there. That means that you took on the world. That means that you weren't transforming. You were conforming to the world. So we got to give that up. That isn't ours. God didn't put that in us. God didn't give us that. He said, instead, the spirit gives us power and love. He helps us control ourselves. So you can no longer say I lost control because you got the spirit of God. And he says that I help you control yourself. The easy reading version says it like this. The spirit God gave us does not make us afraid. His spirit is a source of power and love and self-control. And so when I tap into the spirit that God gave me, it's a source of power. It's like taking your phone charger and plugging it into the outlet. Without it being plugged in the outlet, there's no power. There's no source. But he says this. He says the spirit, his spirit is a source.
source. It's the source of power. It's the source of love. So when I tap into the spirit, because God gave me this, now there's no fear. I can walk on water. I can do what it is that God has called me to do. I can open that business without fear. I can walk away from my job without fear. I can stand and speak without fear. Why? Because I'm operating in the spirit of God, not in my own, not in the spirit of fear that the enemy gave me. I like to say it like this. Mom, dad told us as little children, do not talk to strangers. Well, the enemy is a stranger and that is where the spirit of fear comes from. So we want to push that back. I'm not talking to strangers. I was taught better than that. The Amplified Version says it like this, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. And so listen, God's given us his spirit. It allows us to be well balanced. It allows us to be um, have self-control, well balanced in our mind, which means my mind is operating like God would have me to operate. You know, um, when we think about fear and the root of fear, fear comes from not being able to trust God completely. I know you didn't want to hear that. You don't want to, you know, admit that that's what it is. But anytime you are operating in fear, it is because you don't trust God completely. So if I'm afraid to leave my job and start my own business, it's because I don't trust that God will take care of me. I don't trust the word that God has given me. That's what the root of fear goes back to, your level of trust in God. And so you say, I can't give today because I won't have enough. You don't trust that God will supply every need. You saying that you don't want to tithe, I can't afford to tithe. You don't trust that if you give your tithe, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. When you begin to come into agreement with what the doctor says, said about you. You don't trust that God is the Lord thy God that healeth thee. You don't trust that no weapon formed against you will prosper. You don't trust that he said, what is it that you have against me that I will bring that affliction to an utter end that it shall not rise up a second time. You don't trust the word of God. And so whenever you are operating in fear, it simply means that I do not trust God. Now switch your brain. Now that you understand what fear really is, what the root of it is, is I don't trust my God. Switch your brain and understand that he is God, that although life is life and God is God and what he said, you can take it to the bank. Remember the word to live by yesterday was that God is not a man that will lie. If he said it, he is going to do it. You can trust it. And so heartbeat nation, one of the words, if you don't remember anything else, I need you to remember that God has not given you the the spirit of fear. And he said in the old Testament, don't forget what I told you. I will be with you wherever you go. And knowing that God is with us wherever we go. Hey, that's a security system in itself. I'm always protected. I'm always taken care of. And most importantly, I can do it because I'm operating in the spirit that God gave me, not something that I picked up from the world. Amen. That's the daily dosage for today. Words to live by part five. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this. Come on and let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I'm the heart gatherer. Go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings.
things because they are falling all around you. And if you can, join us at the Gathering of Hearts Sunday morning. All of the information is on the website under the conference tab. Again, I love you guys a bunch. Make it spec while amazing. And once again, happy, happy birthday. Happy born day, Heartbeat Yolanda and Heartbeat Rainy. I know you guys are going to have a great weekend. I know you guys have a whole lot of fun things planned. I love you guys and I will see you all on Sunday. For those I won't see on Sunday, I'll see you right back here Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. as we start a fresh new series in God. Amen. Love you guys.